A cutting board is about the biggest culprit of dulling your knife. There are so many different types of things you can cut on and there's so many different ways you can cut. Today, we're gonna to focus on the best cutting boards, what makes a bad one and which one you want. You need a cutting board because you don't wanna cut on your counter and destroy your counter. You need a cutting board that's gonna work with your knife because you don't wanna destroy your knife. What's the best thing? Hardwoods are such a great material for making a cutting board. They're hard enough that they're not gonna get damaged from the action of cutting on them. They're not gonna to stain too easily, but they're also not gonna dull your knife as you're cutting. Plastic's just fine too. There's a lot of good reasons to use it in a lot of times and situations, like especially if you're addicted to putting stuff in your dishwasher. There's definitely some other materials that you don't wanna use, things that are really hard, like glass, like granite, like the steel counter. That will dull your knife. I mean, a glass cutting board to me is truly an oxymoron. There's other types of wood that you can see or bamboo that, that are really hard. Sometimes you find cutting boards that are made out of compressed wood particles. They're also really hard. That isn't going to destroy your knife like glass and steel or granite would. However, it will dull your knife prematurely. So we try and stay away from those guys. Let's talk about a few of our favorite cutting boards. Number one, far and away, is the Larchwood Canada cutting board. We love them. They're made here in Canada. This is what the company does. They make these cutting boards and they are so tough. They're so resilient. We've had such great success in using them. They're such a nice wood. Larch is a hard wood, but it's not very hard. It's a closed grain wood, so it doesn't absorb things like that would stain your wood or harbor bacteria. They build them in the way that it's the end grain of the wood, not the side. And that cutting through that fiber that way of the wood also isn't as hard on your knife. Also, it doesn't scar up as much when you're cutting the wood itself. Uh, we think they're exceptional. They've got little rubber feet here on the bottom, which is great because it keeps the board off of the countertop so there can be airflow. When you've got a great big board like this, you're not gonna be moving it around. It just becomes a permanent, permanent fixture on your table. And you want the board to not slide around so those feet keep it from moving around when you're cutting. It gives you a really awesome platform to cut on and you never actually have to think about your cutting board again. It's just there, it lives there, and it's amazing. Larchwood Canada cutting boards are awesome. We really like these boards from Sticks and Boards. It's Glenn and Donna. They get wood from a local mill in Ontario, and they just do fantastic work. Now, this is a maple board. They make them in walnut, so you got a couple different color options. And you know, a board like this, it's this size and this weight is awesome, because if you're the type of person you wanna cut a bunch of stuff, and then just scrape it off into the pot, you know, this is a board that's easier to move around. Now, this is a board we get from Tojiro, a knife maker. It's made from a Japanese type of wood called Polonia. This is shockingly lightweight. This is a really cool board, and uh, if you really want something light, this is a great way to go. It's lighter than a lot of the plastic boards you can get. Uh, so if you want something for your camper, traveling around, take it to a cabin, you have a kid that's getting into cooking, uh, you know, this is such a great option. Now this Polonia wood board is a little bit more of an open grain wood. So the technique that they told us about using this board is to actually get it wet first and then cut on it. That water creates a bit of a layer on top of the wood. So then when you go and rinse it off, all the flavors wash away with it. Now, here's a great trick everyone needs to know, regardless of the material your cutting board is made out of. If you don't have some sort of a rubber foot that keeps your board from sliding around, you're working on a really dangerous surface. As you cut, your board's moving around, and it's really not safe trying to hit a moving target. Get a cloth and get it damp. Put it down on your table, and then put your board on top of that. It'll act as a grip mat and it will keep your board from sliding around as you're cutting on it. It'll be much nicer to use. Uh, it, it'll just take a lot of the suck out of cutting. We're not always huge fans of the plastic board. You know, they do the job, they're super cheap, they're not bad for the knife, you can put them in a dishwasher, but you almost have to put them in a dishwasher that as your knife cuts through the board, it, it'll give a home for bacteria 
Now, most wood's actually antibacterial just by nature, and, and plastic certainly is not. So you do need to make sure you're cleaning them. If you have a really old plastic cutting board with lots of grooves from your knife, you should just get rid of it. Uh, if you're uh, really dedicated to that board, sand it down, get rid of those grooves. Now, we do have a board from a great operation out of Japan called Hasegawa, and this board is famous. It is so good at its job. It's just like the pinnacle of cutting board design. One of the great features of it is that it's actually got a wood core and it has different material for the side as it does for the top. This really keeps this board from ever warping. They also coat the board with like nanoparticles of silver or something like real sciency and it has been proven to be the most antibacterial cutting surface on the market. So this is such an amazing board. It's really perfect if you're just like, if you're totally into cooking and you're totally into your knives, this is awesome. They're big enough that you can basically call it a table. If you're a professional chef and you're processing large amounts of food, something like this is basically the size of a whole salmon. Like this is such an amazing work surface to have and, and you'll get a lifetime out of it. The Hasegawa cutting board, the material they use for the surface is excellent for the edge retention of your knife because it's nice and soft. You can put these in a dishwasher if your dishwasher is big enough. And over time, because it is plastic, that surface can scar up a little bit. They even sell a perfect little sanding block so you can sand down those grooves to eliminate that home for bacteria. Let's review some of the bad boards that are out there. Listen, a glass cutting board is an oxymoron. It's not a cutting board. Use it like a hot plate. Because every time you cut, ugh, every time you cut on glass, it just dulls the crap out of your knife. That is so gross. Why are you making me do this? Bamboo is such a popular option. I mean, you can get away with putting it in a dishwasher. It looks like wood. It doesn't look like plastic. It's a little more appealing. You know, bamboo grows so fast, it's really quite a sustainable material. And it's not going to destroy your knife, but it is a really hard material. And this surface, we've just noticed, dulls your knife more than you want it to. And you're not gonna get the most out of your knife if this is the kind of board you're gonna use. Not the end of the world, but it's certainly not my first choice. I mean, you can hear when you cut on it how hard it is. It's the same as those compressed wood particle boards. When you cut on it, just like the glass, if you can hear your knife smacking on that wood, it's not great. If you hear sort of a duller sound to it, much better. If you're gonna buy a cutting board from somebody at a market that you can play a game of chess on, make sure you're buying it from somebody who actually makes cutting boards that people have actually used and you know that the board will last. So many people will do this woodworking thing where they make something that's really cool and they're, they are really cool, but they just don't stand up to being washed the right way. The glue will fall apart. So buy something from someone you can trust. Care for a good wood cutting board is pretty easy. You can watch a whole video we did on caring for a cutting board, but you wash it. You get the stuff off when you're done using it. It's wood, it can dry out. Get a product like a board wax that'll keep the wood moisturized and keep it from drying out and it'll keep it from absorbing flavors. Like, it's a really simple task to take care of a wood cutting board. But never put your wood cutting board in a dishwasher because that's the last day it'll be a cutting board. There's all kinds of great cutting boards. Uh, we've picked the ones we have because of how well they work with the awesome knives we sell. But you know what? If it makes you happy, go ahead and cut on it. We can always resharpen your knife. At the end of the day, the best cutting board for you is the one that makes you happy. Unless it's glass, then you'll be sad.